Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from Pocketnow.com, and in this video we're going to cover the software on the HP iPad Glisten that runs on the AT&T network. So let's start off by turning on the device and we're going to zoom in on the screen. We're going to take out the stylus because the screen is kind of small and from this angle it's a little bit difficult to operate the screen uh, with touch. So the screen is an AMOLED display which really means that colors pop and it should be good on battery life. We still haven't run this through several days of testing so we're not sure if that's the case. The HP iPad Listen comes with the most minimal install of Windows Mobile 6.5 uh, that we've seen, meaning there are very, very little added programs. Almost everything is set to default the way that Microsoft wants it to be. And this is a good and a bad thing. It's good for the people that like to tweak and change things. It's good for people that like things fast and minimal. But it's bad for anybody that wants to have a little bit of fun and wants to look at some eye candy because there really is none on this device. So take that for what it's worth. So here we have the standard titanium interface for Windows Mobile 6.5. We've seen this before. We can see our music in one screen. We can flick through our pictures. We can go through our text messages if we have new ones. We can check out Outlook email. This is an interface that we've seen many, many times. Here's a little bit of a problem. I think they should have gone with the four icon wide grid because right now you only get to see one, two, three, four, five icons on the screen at one time. So you're always having to flick down and flick down and flick down and go to the bottom, which is really annoying. Uh, I understand that they limited the number of icons because of the small screen size and the low resolution, but I think they could have fit um, for. There's definitely a registry hack for this. Now, I've added Opera Mobile 10 beta because the device doesn't come with a better browser. It only has Internet Explorer Mobile, so I've added Opera Mobile 10 beta, which is a quite a good way to, to browse the web, and it works quite well on the, on the Glisten. And so if we go to Wikipedia, it's loading, and it's right now it's over a 3G connection, not Wi-Fi, and it should come up relatively fast. And here it is, Wikipedia. Obviously, this device is not made to be an internet browsing machine, but it definitely is capable. So here we have Wikipedia in its full desktop glory. We can tap in on a column to zoom in. It takes a moment to resize, but here it comes through after the page is loading. There, now it's resized, and it's the text is perfectly readable. So if you're checking a quick website, you can definitely do so using Opera Mobile 10, which is free um, for Windows Mobile. Too bad the device doesn't come with that. So let's exit out of that. And we'll go back into the start menu to see what else is in here. So we have the basic Windows Mobile stuff, Active Sync, email, phone, all of this is just default. Let's take a look at the camera application, which is actually quite good, and it's different than what comes standard on Windows Mobile. So it's hard to see right now, but we have a little gear icon down here, and we have this really nice interface. We can change the timer or the frame. We can go to the next panel, a very intuitive, finger-friendly interface for the camera. Uh, we can adjust the brightness and the contrast. We can change the white balance to various different degrees. Uh, we can change the effect. And then we can also change the resolution. The camera is three megapixels. You can also go down to two megapixels or even smaller than that. And you can switch modes by actually pressing the D-pad. You can go from, um, you know, taking a photo to, let's see if I can get that back up, uh, to, to taking a video. Right now we're in video mode and let's see what the resolutions are for the video. We're actually in MMS video, so now we are in the proper screen. And the maximum resolution, unfortunately, is only QVGA for the video. Um, this is not going to be a device to replace your video camera, but it will take quick video, and we're going to post samples in the full review on pocketnow.com coming up soon. So let's go back into the start menu and see what else we have here. So we have a lot of AT&T proprietary stuff, and we see this on all of the AT&T Windows mobile devices, so App Center and AT&T Navigator, stuff that I'm not going to go into. Mobile web, this is all AT&T stuff. Let's go into apps and take a look at what we have in here. We have Voice Commander, which isn't as good as Microsoft Voice Command, but it lets you control the device remotely uh, with your voice. So you'll say, call Bob home, and it'll, it'll call Bob home. We have some widgets in here, the Facebook application for Windows Mobile, and then we have something called HP PhotoSmart. So HP used the PhotoSmart sort of branding on an application that I don't think really deserves to be branded with HP PhotoSmart. PhotoSmart printers are fantastic. Their software is good, but this really isn't. Um, so, so from here you can launch the camera, you can print this if you're connected to a, a printer via Bluetooth or other means. Um, you can trash it, you can email it. Basically it's like a glorified photo management tool that isn't necessarily better than what's built into Windows Mobile by default. 
So we're going to exit from there. Let's go back into the Start menu. And we just went into Apps, and then we have the Marketplace, of course. Um, we have Games, and in here we have a lot of trial-based uh, Javaware. So Pac-Man and uh, Monopoly, you can only play a few times before you actually have to pay for it. at and does this a lot. Um, going down the list, we have Windows Live, Mobile Video, which is an AT&T branded thing. We have something called YP Mobile, and let's launch that. And YP Mobile is just a link to the Yellow Pages mobile um, download application. So you can go and download that if you'd like. Although my guess is that it has similar functionality to Google Maps Mobile or even Bing Mobile. So let's go back down the list to where we were before. AT&T Wi-Fi, so you can get on AT&T Wi-Fi hotspots. We have Office Mobile Suite, which is nice, pictures and video. If we go into Tools, we have some things. We have the standard Windows Mobile Calculator, Internet Sharing, a Printing Utility, Remote Desktop, although you're definitely not going to want to use Remote Desktop on such a low-resolution display. Proxy Manager, sort of more technical things in here. Windows Media Player. File Explorer, everything else from here on down, I've added these two things, is, is stock. Um, stuff that we, we see in the standard install of Windows Mobile 6.5. Let's take a look at the settings to see what things that we can tweak and what hardware buttons we can change. So here we are in power, and this device has been off the charger for about three hours, and it's down 93%, which is quite good. We expect this to have good battery life. And we can go into um, personal to take a look at what buttons we can change the function of. And there are four buttons that we can change the, the function of, and they all reside on the bottom of the keyboard here, which is quite nice that you have four programmable hardware keys. So if you want to quickly launch Opera Mobile without having to um, go into the start menu, you can do that, and so on and so forth. Here's some settings for voice commander. We're going to go back, go into system, And we can do a factory restore. We can look at device information. Let's see how much memory we have. We've been opening a lot of programs. Fortunately, the iPad Listen has ample program RAM, which is fantastic. Right now, several programs are open, and we're still looking at 130 megabytes of free RAM, which is really quite fantastic. It's even better than, say, the Samsung Omnia 2, which gets well below 100 when you open up a few programs. Let's see what else we have down here. Again, pretty much everything is, is stock down here. If we go into backlight, we can change the backlight setting and have it be uh, set to automatic backlight, which is probably makes the most sense for to save on battery power. Or you can manually switch the, the backlight all the way up to 10. Gets really bright and uses a lot of power. Go down to 1. Can hardly see the screen. Oddly, you can turn the backlight off on the Omnia 2 and the Omnia Pro, which has at, which have AMOLED screens. Um, but with this device, it seems to really rely on the backlight to be able to see things on the screen. Go back. We can go finally into connections, and we can go into the wireless manager, which, as no surprise, is the standard default wireless manager. Nothing has been changed. And here we have GPS data for the A GPS on the device, the assisted GPS. And real quick, let's go through typing so you can get a feel for how fast you can type on this device. We're going to go back into the start menu and launch uh, Word Mobile. So down here. The performance on this device is quite good. It's running a snappy 533 megahertz processor. It has plenty of program RAM. Um, you may see some delays. That's because I'm missing the screen because I'm shooting from a strange angle here. So let's give a, a little bit of a test. I haven't been practicing for too long, but maybe you can get a feel for how, how good the keyboard is. Quite nice, I made some errors there. It says this is a test of the keyboard. With a little practice, I think this is going to be a really fantastic keyboard. Be sure to check the final review to see our final verdict on the keyboard and how good it actually is. So overall, we're really surprised to see such a bare bones install of Windows Mobile 6.5 on the HP iPad Listen. It really looks like HP spent no time customizing this device. 
which could have been on purpose to make it all about the hardware. The hardware is quite fantastic and is really productive with great one-handed usability, an excellent keyboard and a touch screen that looks great with AMOLED technology. That said, the tweakers among us are going to want to put on SBB Mobile Shell or change the interface a bit and customize how many icons are on this screen uh, because out of the box, the device is a little bit bland, um, to, to say the least. But again, I think it's going to be a fantastic tool for people that want to be as productive as possible. So be sure to check pocketnow.com for the full review coming up soon. We're going to talk about battery life and speed, photo quality, and a lot more. That's it for now on the HP iPack Listen.